welcome everybody to Granny Squares on this lovely Monday afternoon. Your teacher Darren is there on screen showing off some of the things you'll be able to make after you take this class and practice for a little while. My name is Claire. I'll be hanging out in the chat and answering your questions there or forwarding, forwarding them on to Darren. Woo. Uh, just a reminder that this class is being recorded. So you'll be able to go back and watch this as many times as you need to. It'll be available tomorrow afternoon on michaels.com slash classes. And again, just if you have any questions, please put them in the chat here in Zoom and I can either answer them or forward them to Darren. And with that, I will let Darren take it away. All right, welcome to class. Today, we are gonna do a gentle introduction to granny squares, on how to make granny squares, um, I want to try to review three different kinds of granny squares, depending on how how fast the class moves. So hopefully we'll be able to do um, two or three different types. And possibly at the end, I would like to show you how to join them together because it is nice. Um, I mean, you can make granny squares and use them for coasters, or you can, when you start a granny square, you can either stop it like this big, or you can just keep going and make it into one big blanket. But if you make a whole bunch of granny squares, of course, you want to sew them together and make them into something. So uh, we'll try to get that towards the end. Um, so if we want to switch the view to the view of my overhead camera, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, okay so um, whatever granny, whatever yarn and hook you want to use for your granny squares. You just wanna make sure that they're um, compatible together. So I'm going to be using um, this hometown bonus bundle by Lion Brand. And this is available on lionbrand.com or michaels.com. I'm gonna be using several different colors, but the crochet hook this recommends is an N13 or a nine millimeter. And it should always say on the side of your yarn what size hook it recommends. And so if you're making granny squares, you should use a hook that's about that same size. You can go up a hook size or down a hook size if you need to, but it should be relatively pretty close to that, to that size. And so I'm using this hook by Lion Brand, and I am going to be using the M, um, the N13, which is an, a nine millimeter. So it's the same, lots of different ways of talking about how big the hook is. So um, you might hear an N13 or nine millimeter. So I'm going to be using that one today. And the first thing we do when we're starting a granny square for this first one is you do start with a slip knot. So just however you tie a slip knot for your crochet. Is you want me to zoom in? Is it better if I zoom in a little bit? Let me zoom in. You guys are down a little bit. So you start with a slip knot, and I'm going to chain four. So just chain four. And then you're gonna join that, you're gonna enter the original chain and you're gonna join that with a slip knot and make a circle. So basically we're gonna be working our stitches into the center of the circle right into there. And, uh, you're in. Sorry, we've got a couple of requests for you to try and speak up a little bit. We're muffled today for some reason. Okay, let me move my microphone a little closer. It looked like it fell over. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. So let me go back. So you join, you, make, you chain four, you join it to make a ring. And I'm gonna work with double crochets today. Um, but when you're doing a granny square, you could do single or triple or any, any one that you want. So I'm gonna chain three for my double crochet. So one, two, three. Now that chain three counts as a double crochet. So I'm going to do two more double crochet. Oops. Two double, no thumbs today. Two more double crochet. So there's one that counts as my first one, my chain three, double crochet, and then another one. So 
So I have two double crochets. And then I'm gonna chain two. And that chain two, you'll see here in a few minutes, that chain two is gonna count as a corner. And when you're learning this, sometimes it's nice to keep track of your corners by putting a stitch marker. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker there to keep track of my corner. And I'm gonna do three double crochet. I'm gonna be working with clusters of three double crochets. So one, two, three double crochets and chain two for my next corner. So for square, obviously we're gonna have four corners. So put a stitch marker to mark that corner. Do three double crochets. Again, we're working into the center of the circle. So three double crochets. Is the volume better, Claire? Like the volume's okay, yeah. Three double crochets into the center. So one, two, three. I'm going to do two chains for my next corner. I'm going to mark that. And after you practice a bit, you don't always have to mark the corners, but it's nice when you're learning. And I'm going to do three more double crochets for the last side of my square. I think after this round, Darren, we've got requests to go back and start from the beginning with the volume and I think the camera angle. We had some people miss that part. Okay. So I've got my last three um, double crochet, which finished the last side. And then I have to finish my last corner. So two double or two chains for my last corner. And then you join that with a slip stitch. And I can start the beginning and show you again, but let's just finish this one. And then you put a marker to mark the corner. So what we end up with are four corners and then four sides. So one, two, three, four sides and four corners. And you can already see it's already looking um, more square than it is circle. It's not really looking like a circle because we did these, these corners, these chain twos to create the corners. It does kind of force it into a square shape. Okay, so I can, I'll be happy to start over again. Was there any particular question about how it started? You want me to double, make sure I go over or just the whole thing kind of? I think the whole thing, and if you happen to have a lighter yarn, the dark yarn on the dark background is a little little difficult to see. Yeah, I have several colors here because I'm trying to experiment because the lighter yarn sometimes reflects the light back and it's hard to see. So I'm trying to come up with a good system, hopefully. All right, so you just start with it. A slip knot, however you tie your slip knot is fine. And then you chain four. So one, two, three, four. So you chain four. You join that with a slip stitch. Okay. And you just kind of you can kind of find it, put your finger in the center to kind of keep it open if you want to to find it. And I'm going to work with double crochets today. So I'm going to chain three. Okay. And that chain three counts as my first double J. Um, each side of my square is going to have three double crochet making up the sides for the first round. So the first chain three counts as a double crochet. I'm going to double crochet in the center. Make two double crochets in that center now. So my chain 
That's my chain. That counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three, double crochet, chain two. And it's not a bad idea to put a stitch marker there just to mark your chain two for the corner. Do three double crochet. Okay, so three double crochet for that side. Chain two. Put my stitch marker on. Okay, so three more double crochet. Right in the center. Okay, so there's my corner. So one, two, three double crochet chain two for my next corner. I'm going to put the stitch marker right on there to mark it. And then three more. So if you look here, you can see I have one, two, three sides. So I have to finish my last side. So three double crochets for the last side. I'm going to chain two for my corner. I'm going to put a stitch marker for my corner. And then, so there's my double crochet, double crochet. There's my chain three. So one, two, three. I'm going to slip stitch just right on the top of that chain. So just go into that chain and do a slip stitch. And I'll show you how to do this again later. I'll, I'll put a stitch marker in to show you exactly how to find it. And okay, so there, if you kind of stretch it out, you can see I've got four corners and four sides. And that is the first round of the granny square. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do different colors to show you how to change colors. So what you want to do is you want to cut your yarn and just pull that through. And so basically that round is finished and kind of sealed off. Get this out of the way. And now I'm gonna use this cream colored yarn next. And I'll show you how to join that on, it's very easy. So what you wanna do is you just wanna pick any one of these corners. You can pick any corner you want. I like to do it in a different corner than where I started. So I'm gonna do it in this one. And so I'm gonna chain three. I'm gonna connect that. And then chain three. So one, two, three. And if you want to, to help keep track of that, if you're, you can put, so chain three, you can put a stitch marker just for your chain three. So you know which one your chain three was when you come back around. So I'm going to go ahead and create the corner for this one. So I did my chain three, that counts as my first double crochet. And so for the second round, it's a little different. So I'm going to do a double crochet. Oops. So do, and then do another one. So I've got three double crochet and that's half of my corner. So it's kind of on this side, I'm going to chain two and then do three more double crochet in that same space and that will create my whole corner. Let me get some yarn pulled up. So one. Two. So three double crochet in that same chain two space. Now let's look and see what we've got going on. I want to move this stitch marker. Get this out of the way. Okay. So here's my chain three, and that counts as my first double crochet. So chain three. So one, two, three, double crochet. 
my chain two for my corner. I'm gonna put a stitch marker on and then three double crochet and that starts me around on my other side. Now I'm gonna go directly to this next oh. corner right here. Erin, could you go back and just show how you joined that new color again? Okay. This is pretty easy to do it. It might seem hard, but kind of the reason it seems hard is because there's really not a lot to it. So really you just reach through that corner with your hook and you just bring up a loop. You kind of join it with a slip stitch. So that's the first chain. So one, two, three. Now it probably seems like it should be harder than that but it's actually pretty easy. You just kind of join it. Does that, do you want to see it again or does that make sense? Let's see, let's just do it again, just in case. So you just reach through that corner, that chain two space with your hook and leave enough yarn for a tail so you can sew that in later. You just bring up a loop And you just join it like that. It's very easy. If it seems too easy, you probably did it right. Um, we tend to make things more complicated than they need to be sometimes. So it's probably, if you try it, you'll probably see how easy it is. So you just join it like that. Does that make sense? I think so. And just to clarify, you're joining in the space in one of the corner spaces, not in top of the stitch, correct? No, no, I'm joining into the into the chain two space. So around around the chain two space. So you can see the the yarn goes all the way around it. Okay. And I'll be joining again on the next round. So we'll be able to go over this again. So I'm gonna do two double crochets. Remember the chain three counts as a double crochet. So technically I have three double crochet here chain two for my corner, three double crochet for the next side, okay, so here we are again, I've got my chain three, two double crochet, my chain two space, and then three double crochet, and then I'm gonna go right to the next corner and start with three double crochet in that next corner. So three double crochets, one, this is my second one. Three. And then chain two. And that creates the corner and I'm going to move my stitch marker up so that you always know where your corner is. And then so I've got my chain two, I'm going to do three double crochet. So that is my next corner, okay? I'm gonna just go ahead and move just right on to the next one. So I'm gonna take the stitch marker out so I can see where I'm going. Three double crochet in the next chain two space. chain two. So you can see it's very repetitive. Once you get the, um, the theory down and practice a little bit, they're actually quite easy to do. Of course, it's never easy the first couple times though, right? So one double Benjamin has a good question. In okay. this second round, are there two chains between each double crochet cluster? or just in the corner? 
just in the corners. So there are many, many, many different um, styles of granny squares. And so this basic one that I'm showing you today, we do not have a chain um, chain two in between. So I have my chain, my chain, uh, my three double crochets, chain two for the corner, three double crochets, and then I don't do a chain here, but you can see it does create this little space. So you do two double, three double crochets here, and then immediately go to the next one and do three double crochets. There is not a chain in between. Now you might see a different type of granny square where there is a chain in between, and there, there are many, many different types. Okay. So you can see right here, I did my three double crochets, and I'm going to just go into my next corner, starting with three double crochets. Three double crochets. Now my chain two. And then three double crochets in the same chain two space to finish off that side. Whoops, don't let that tail from the previous row get in your way. And after I finish this, I'm going to do one more color and then I can start back from the very beginning if you want me to. And then you just join this with a slip stitch back to the beginning. Cut your color off, your yarn. Oops. And then you can see. I didn't maintain my stitch markers, but you can see the corners pretty clearly, so you might not need them. But I'm going to put them so you can see where I'm working into. Okay. So as you can see, it's turning into a nice, pretty good square. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to go ahead and start the next color. I'll show you how to join the next color. And then the next round is pretty much almost exactly the same as the second round. There's one difference and I wanna show you that. And then after you finish the third round, the rounds pretty much repeat. So um, then we can start back at the beginning if you want to. Okay, so I'm gonna take this stitch marker out. I'm gonna join this red. And I'm just gonna join it on this corner. So you just reach through with your hook, bring up a loop, and now I'm going to chain three. So one, two, three. And that counts as my first double crochet. I'm going to do two double crochet. So one, two, so two double crochet. Now for the corner, my chain two to create the chain two space, and then do three double crochet. Into that corner. Okay, just so you can see what I'm doing, I'll lay it out. So there's my chain three two double crochet, chain two for the corner, and then three double crochet. And instead of now, instead of like jumping to this very next corner, we're going to do, uh, we're gonna put three double crochet in this um, space that was created in the previous row. So just three double crochet. So there's my corner, my three double crochet for this space. And now I'm gonna do the next corner. So I'll do three double crochet, chain two, and then three double crochet. So 
one. And really all thumbs today. I don't know what's going on. Two. So three double crochet. Chain two for the corner. And then three double crochet. You can see, especially with large yarn like this, these granny squares work up, they get big quite fast. So one, two, three double crochet. So you can see how that um, takes you around the corner to the next side. So when we say we're creating the corner, it really is exactly that. We do three double crochet, chain two for the corner, and that takes us around to the next side. So that is actually creating the corner. And then we're gonna do our three double crochet in this space that we have on the previous row. Three. And then now we're ready to do our next corner. And then chain two for the corner. I kind of gave up with my stitch markers because it's pretty easy to see where the corners are. I think you guys can see because it's nice big yarn. Okay, so chain three, I'm sorry, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and that creates the corner. Don't forget about our little space there. Three double crochet in that one. Up to the next corner. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Okay, and now I just have to finish my last side. So three double crochet in here. And then after this, we can go clear back to the very beginning if you want. And then I'm just gonna join it with a slip stitch. Cut your yarn and pull it through. And of course you have to weave in all your ends, but you, I can show you how to do that too if you want. You see you get a nice, it's a nice square. And you get these real pretty little, like little kind of color. It almost looks like a little four leaf clover in the center, I think. So any questions about any of this? And would you like to see it start from the very beginning again? What do you think, Claire? I know we had some people requesting if you're going to do the gray square in one yarn, you're not changing colors every round. How do you start the second and the third round? I think we do okay. want to see from the beginning again. All right. So one second. My volume was low. Okay. Well, we'll keep this one for fun. All right, 
I think this yarn was the better one for the demonstrating. So we're going to start with our slip knot. Chain four. And then join it with a slip stitch to make a circle. It's not a bad idea to kind of find the center of the circle with your finger. Kind of open that up so it's easy to work into. Chain three, one, two, three. Working in the center of that circle. I'm going to do two double crochet. Chain two. Now remember, my chain three counts as my first double crochet. So chain two. And now I'm going to be doing three double crochet. So one, two, three, and then chain two. And then three double crochet in the center. While we're still at the beginning of this square, could you start a granny square with uh, a magic ring or magic circle? I think they're called sometimes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You can start it with a magic circle or magic ring. Um, except if you want to, absolutely. Okay, so do chain two for my final corner and then join that with a slip stitch. I'm going to put these on just so you can see. Maybe it makes it easier to see where I'm working into. So this will mark our corners. So corners are the really where the, I mean, they're, they're, that's what kind of makes it into a square, obviously, like you have to have corners. And now that I have um, finished my square, and I'm going to keep the same color. I'm going to chain three with the same color. And that counts as that counts as my first double crochet. And here there are actually a couple of different ways people do it. You can, the way I like to do it is I actually like to, to turn it. You turn it and then start your corner from scratch. So there is my double crochet. My second one, my third one, and then chain two, and then my three double crochet. So I'm going to finish this corner and then I'm going to rip it out and show you that again. Okay, so there's my corner. So this is my chain three, which counts as my first double crochet. So chain three, double, double. And there's my chain two space. And then there's three, um, three double crochets. And that creates my corner. And so then you would just Proceed the round to three, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, do this corner, do this corner, and then join it with a slip stitch. But let me rip this out and show you what I did, why I did it that way. So 
We're going to join with a slip stitch. We're just finishing our first round. Join with a slip stitch. So one, two, three. Now the problem that you might run into with making granny squares um, is if so, a couple of different things you can do. So at this point, I have my chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And as we, we've gone over, the corner of a granny square is a chain three. Well, once you get over here, it's three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. When we start off, we're starting off with a chain three and that counts as our double crochet. So if we, we could just do the chain three and then continue, so we could do a chain three and I go to this next corner, it kind of pulls it and then we could go all the way around. And then when we get back to this corner, we would have to do three double crochet, a chain two, two double crochet, and then join it to this chain. And that, that kind of gets a little awkward. So that's one, one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is, see that's kind of the problem with almost everything in crochet or knitting is there's so many ways you can do things, so many different ways. Um, you can, instead of, you can, um, sorry, you can reach behind it like this and you can do two double crochets in that same space. And so now I've got half of my corner done. I've got three double crochets now. And then you go all the way around. And when you come back here, you have to do three double crochets and chain two and join it. So that's another way you can do it. But the way I like to do it, I think is the easiest. I like the easiest way. I always like the easiest way is you do your chain three and I turn my work and then I do my complete corner. So I do my chain three, I do two double crochets and I've got half my corner, chain two, for my corner and then do two, I'm sorry, three, do three double crochets for the other side of my corner. One, two, three. Okay, so I've got, I'm gonna go on to my next corner. So you don't do a chain, for this granny square, you don't do any chains in between. So I'm just gonna go right to the next corner. Three double crochets. So while I'm doing this, this is pretty much what we did before. So you've seen this. Are there any questions about how I started that first corner or is it, did I absolutely confuse you to no end? I think I did chain three. Any questions at all? We do have some questions yet. I would um, imagine. What's the advantage to turning the work to start the next round? The only real advantage that I, it is to me, it, it makes the most sense because when you turn your work, you're starting with that chain three, like we did before. And so you can do your chain three and then you do your double crochet chain two space, and then your three double crochet, and you're finished with that corner. And when you come all the way back around to that corner, it's finished and you just have to join it with a slip stitch. If you don't turn it and you do like half of the corner and you come all the way around, then you have to finish the half of that corner on the other end. And there's, I mean, that's fine. And after you practice a little bit, it might seem more straightforward, but it, it might be a little dicey the first couple of times you try it. So really the best way to do it is whichever way is the most natural or the, whichever way feels the most natural in your hand. So that's the one I like best. You might not like that one best. So 
Does that help or any, you wanna see any of these again? I can show you them, all of them. Well, I was gonna say we've got about 20 minutes left and we do have several people who are interested in seeing how to join granny squares together and also how to weave in the ends on the one you did uh, different colors on. And I don't know if we're gonna have time to show okay. more than one type of granny so be after all. I don't think so. I always over prepare because I'm always like wanting to show like the whole world, everything I know, but um, at least this way I can show you the pic what they look like at the end and then you can research. It'll give you something to research on your own going forward. But once you learn this basic granny square, I will tell you the other ones are pretty straightforward. So they're the same theory. The stitching is just a little different. So let me, I'll go ahead and put this one aside and let's talk about weaving in the ends. And then I will join them and then we can um, go over any other questions after that. How does that sound? That sound good? So with crochet, crochet is a three-dimensional stitch and the fabric is um, kind of thick and it's kind of plush. And with crochet, you've got these, um, these areas, it's almost like a tube. Like if I put my needle through there, it doesn't show on the other side because it's it's buried in the middle. You've got a lot of yarn, um, they're loops, and so you're going through the center of the loops. And I like to use those areas to kind of hide my end. So what I'm gonna do here in the first is thread my darning needle. And then I'm just going to kind of um, put it under the yarn like that. Now these bright colored darning needles are nice because you can see them. And if I turn my work on the other side, you can clearly see that the needle is not showing through, showing through here and here on each side of it, but not. So that means the yarn will be buried. So when I pull my yarn through, it's gonna clearly be buried in the center. And so it's not, I'm not gonna see like a strand of yarn going across. You don't wanna see that. And so I'm going to take it another maybe half circle around. So see, I'm going in between. I'm going inside of that. You can almost see here how it's coming. And then if you look on this side, the needle is buried. And pull that through. And then you want to check and make sure you're not interfering with the way it looks on either side. And then and then you want to go back the same direction. You can't just kind of go straight back through or else it'll kind of unravel. So what I like to do then is um, kind of go a little deeper and pick up like a strand of yarn and take it under that. And then go back the same path that I came from. So you kind of loop it around another strand of yarn so that you're not just un, like pulling it back out of where you just put it. Unravel, needle unthreaded. Pull that through. And then I'm just gonna snip that off and that should be good. Okay. And then up here, same thing. So it's just white one, thread the needle. Is it better without the light shining right on it for the white? Is that better or worse? The two. Sometimes the white reflects a lot of the light. So um, I'm going to bury this under this red corner. So when you see this red corner, you can see all of these strands of yarn so I'm going to just take my needle kind of in that tunnel of yarn. It's not coming through the other side. So I'm gonna pull it through. Take that one out of the way. Kind of split it there. So Rethread my needle. And then kind of Kind of anchor it under these, because if you if you just put it right back through where you came, then it's gonna it's gonna unravel. 
it'll just pull back out. So I'm going to kind of anchor it here and then take it back through that same corner. Always double check and make sure it's not showing on the other side and then pull it through. And that should be good. You can um, run it through another time if you want. But the one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to just um, tie knots. Like I have had to repair so many Afghans for people that were vin vintage Afghans that their grandmothers have made that are all unraveling and falling apart because the knots were tied and they are unraveling now. And they certainly can be repaired and saved, but if you try to avoid tying knots and weave in your ends properly, then you won't have to have that worry for the future. So just kind of weave them in. Any questions about this? Are you able to see what I'm doing clearly? You're able to see. Sometimes I'm not sure how it's showing up on the video. I try to keep my hands out of the way. So this gray one, Kind of bring it under this white, kind of bring it back down towards the gray. And then kind of anchor it here in the gray section. And then I'm going to hide it, kind of bury it in this corner. I think these corners are a nice way to hide the ends so that the little ends don't pop out and show later. They kind of get buried in that corner area. And kind of anchor it here. And then take it back through all the way through the whole corner. You don't want to pull it tight. So you kind of massage it out a little bit to make sure that you're not distorting the shape. Any questions about weaving in the ends? I think that is good for the ends. We do okay. want to make sure to how to join them together. Okay. Again, with joining them, there's always like a thousand ways of doing it. There's so many, so many ways you can do it. But I'm going to show you a couple ways that I like. So here are two granny squares I made with different yarn. These are made out of a yarn called Trubu. And the, this yarn is also available on michaels.com or lionsbrand.com. It's a bamboo. It's a very nice yarn, for, especially for spring. It's kind of light, great, great colors. When I make granny, when, when sewing granny squares together, if, if the last border, if the last color is the same on all of your squares, then you can sew them together with that same color and it's going to give it a very nice look. If they're different colors, like if I were trying to sew these two together, if they were the same size, um, it's still very, you can still do it and it can still look very nice, but you have to be more careful because if you have one pink and one brown, when you sew them together, you might see your stitches. So depending on um, what you want it to look like and how good of a seamstress you are, um, if you use all the same color on the outside of your square, it will give you, it'll be much easier to make it look nice. So as you're practicing, it might be a smart, smart idea to keep them all the same. Okay. And so, kind of zoom in on this so you can really kind of see. I need a good lighting director. If anyone knows a lighting director, they can send over to help me. So what you want to do is you want to find the nice corner. So start off on the corner and pick up um, two strands of yarn on that corner for the stitch. And the same on this one. I don't know if you can see, I'm picking up two strands.
And so right here, oops, sorry. so right here, you can see there's kind of like this, this stitch right here, always coming from the bottom. I'm going to pick that up. And same on this side, coming from the bottom. Pick that up. Taking the tail out of your work. So it's kind of a zigzag. Then you're going to always pick it up from the bottom. Just kind of going one, one stitch at a time. able to see what I'm doing? I think your camera angle got a little funky when you lowered it there. I feel like I'm sorry. It won't let me zoom in. So I'm just trying to put it down low and then it gets like a weird angle. Let me lift it back up and maybe if I hold it. I know you're using the contrast color to show how, or sorry, the same color to show how invisible the seam is. But could you do it with the contrast colors so we can see yeah. what it looks like? <laughs> that's, that's hard. Sorry, that's what I should have done to begin with. That is a smarter idea. Okay. Pull that out. Okay, so we're going to just find a good corner. Oops, don't pull it all the way through. That's not helpful. on the corner and then so where I'm going into is I'm finding these each one of these it looks like a V or the chain stitch on the edge and that's that's where I'm going into so when you do it yourself it'll be much easier for you to see but you just kind of, I like to do every one. I don't like to skip any because if you're going to all this trouble of doing it, you want it to be a nice, strong seam. And you could double strand do your yarn or single strand it if you want it to be a little stronger. So you can see when I was trying this with the regular, with the same color yarn, you couldn't even see what I was doing. It was very invisible. You could do it with a contrasting yarn. And if you're really neat with your stitching, it could look like a nice detail. Um, I'd probably rather not. What do you think, Claire? Would you do a contrasting color? Or would you do the same color? You could get fancy and use a contrasting color. Well, I don't know if my stitching is quite neat enough that I would be brave. And what is this steamy technique called? Is this the invisible join? Um, it's called the invisible join, or I've heard this stitch called the inside out stitch. It's not quite mattress stitch, um, but you can see when you pull it tight. The nice thing about this is it's very flat. And then on this side also, it's very flat. So there's not, it doesn't have to really be a right side or a wrong side. Okay, I'm gonna, do we have time to do another one? Do we, can we see this one? Are we ready to move on or do we have questions? Oh, good question. Are you seaming with the squares right side up or wrong side up? You know, with this method, because it's pretty reversible, you could do it either way. Okay, is that better? Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, you could do it either way because it is pretty reversible. I would probably, you know, if one side looks better than the other, I would probably keep all the squares, you know, facing the right, the same direction. But because it is, um, it's almost the same on both sides, it doesn't really matter with this one. Let me show you a way that you could crochet them together. You can see that gives you a very nice flat 
pretty strong. Now this one I'm going to show you, you could do right sides or wrong sides together. Um, again, I would keep them the same, either always right sides or always wrong sides. And then um, I'll show you what you can make the decision on what side, what you would want on the front or on the back. So we can find a nice corner. Bring up a slip, a slip stitch and do a chain. And you're going to pick up the entire stitch on each side. And at first, I want to I can do a couple things here, but I'm going to do a single crochet first. So go through, go through the next stitch, bring it back through, and do a single crochet. Go through both that edge stitch on both squares and do a single crochet. And this creates a little ridge, which can be decorative, or if you don't like it as much, you can put it on the back. So you can make your decision if you want it on the front or on the back. Again, I would probably do this with the pink yarn. Left a little loose there. So that way it would be more of an invisible look, but um, you can do it in a contrasting yarn if you want it to be decorative. Depends how fancy you are. I'm not very fancy. Okay, are you able to see what I'm doing? Let's just look at it for a second. So you can see it kind of creates that, that kind of decorative edge, kind of a raised edge. Or if you look on this side, if that were the same color, you wouldn't even see that. So you can decide, would you rather do it all the same color so it's invisible? Or would you rather have this kind of like decorative raised edge? Um, instead of double, instead of single crochet, you could just do a slip stitch as well. So you could just bring up a loop and then slip it. Bring up a loop and slip it. And that joins it as well. But then you kind of only get it on one side. You don't kind of get it there. So that would be something you'd probably do more on the back. And then it gives you the same look on the front. So it's you use less yarn and it would be a flatter, a flatter seam. Okay. Any other questions? Looks like we're about to five o'clock. Let me just show you these other ones just so that you can see that there are other options. So one thing about granny squares is they do end up having all these holes in them, which are cute um, and it's nice. And they're not that big. So for a blanket uh, or an afghan. You know, it's still very warm and very nice. But if you wanted to make a sweater out of these, you know, you might not want so many holes in it. You know, I don't, I don't know your life or where you're going. Maybe you do want a bunch of big holes in a sweater. But if you don't, then there's this square, which is more of a, they call this a solid granny square, but it's more of a semi-solid because you still have the holes on the corners, but then it's solid kind of in the middle. So it is more solid. And then you have the hole in the center. And then this last one I want to show you is this one is a more, much more solid one. So you don't have any holes even in the scent sides. And then the center of this one, I did start at Wedgie Ring because it closes up that center hole and it makes them all very solid. So 
Um, this will be your homework if you're interested. You can research a solid granny squares. And if you Google solid granny squares, it'll bring up this one and this one. The people, they call this one a solid one, even though it's not. So that's kind of like for future, for future research. Like after you've practiced the basic one, you can, um, and then there's also all kind, like you can do granny squares instead of just squares, they'll have like a flower shape in here and then it, it turns into a square or you can make a heart shape or all there's, it's an unlimited choice of designs. So once you learn the basic one, you can branch out and do all, all kinds and maybe even invent some of your own. And then of course it's fun to change colors and do all kinds of things. Any, any questions at all I can cover quickly about anything we did? Anything else? Let's see, I'm gonna scan through the chat here, but I will remind everybody that we are recording this and so it'll be available tomorrow on michaels.com slash classes to watch. Um, apologies that we didn't get to cover more than one square. We will see if we can do another session of this class and streamline it a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, also, if you do have questions going forward, you can um, contact me on either Instagram or TikTok. My, my uh, name on those platforms is Mr. Woolly Bear. It's M-I-S-T-E-R, Woolly Bear spelled out. So maybe Claire will put that in the chat. Uh, try to answer DMs pretty quick. So. Um, I hate to like leave you in a lurch if you have questions, but you know you can always contact me for more information if you need to. Okay. Anything else? Anything else, Claire? Last question: How do you prevent a large hole in the center of the gray square? Well, um, when you're when you join those when you chain four and then you you join it with the slip knot you have to make sure you keep that pulled tight. So as you're going, so I like to put my finger in it to keep it open, but then pull it tight to kind of pull it as tight as possible. But because your finger's there, it's still keeping it open enough to work into. So just when you when you join it with a slip stitch, you need to make sure you're keeping it pulled tight because if you, if you let a lot of slack into it and you do a couple of double crochets, then you're not gonna be able to pull it tight again. You might be able to, when you're weaving in your end, kind of go back in and cinch it up a little bit, but just kind of keeping it really kind of snug when, when you start out. And if you see that it has a big hole when you first start out, you know, maybe stop and, and give it another try, but just kind of keep, keep things pulled kind of snug. Or that would be a case to use that magic circle or magic. Yeah, it's if you magic, know the magic thing, if you know the magic ring, then that you can just let it be as slack as you want. And then when you're finished, you can pull your tail and that will um, pull it as tight as you need it to be. But that's another, I mean, that's not hard to do. So you can, you can always learn that. That's a great skill to have. Okay, anything else? Thanks for joining everybody. All right, thanks for coming to class. Have a great night practice.